Hey, good morning, guys. This is a general uh, install demo and kind of a breakdown for my friends over at Phoenix Props for the Jedi Killer Gen 2. Uh, this is install the Profi, and the other one will be as well. I got two of your guys' sabers to do, right? I got this one that did not have the red wire installed, and then the other one that, of course, has the red wire installed. So what I did was I went through and I weathered them both. Um, for anybody watching this video about the weathering, uh, the weathering will slightly change on the production runs, uh, taking some uh, constructive feedback from Phoenix Props on what they'd like to see um, and just kind of getting my bearings with these. So I'm typically not a weather guy. Like I'll weather commissions that come my way. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever agreed to do like a weathering job on a Sabre run. A uh, second offer I've had, the first one I accepted, all right? This, so it's not typically my um, wheelhouse, but I am actually very happy to do it. I'm looking forward to doing it, um, but was catching my bearings a little bit on this guy. It was a fine line between on this one, you kind of weather the edges and I want wanted you guys to feel like you're getting your money's worth when you pay extra for weathering, but also not going overboard. All right. So, yeah, it's it's a little it can be difficult on sabers like this, but hopefully, you know, um, it will be kind of close to this. So hopefully you guys like what you see. All right. Uh, this is a two button setup. So your two switches like the Gen 1 are located right here. The switch closest to the emitter will be the power. And of course, the back one will be the auxiliary. All right. Um, it's got a new crystal chamber design from the Gen 1. So I did light up <clears throat> this crystal right here. One thing I will suggest, anybody doing their own installs. I only had two of these, so I had to only use one for this one. And I saved the other one that I've got for the other JK that I have to do. But um, I'm going to put up a picture right now. You will want to get these small NeoPixels from Cal over at KR Sabers. They, they are very, like, it's almost necessary to do these. If I had had more than two in my inventory, I would have put one on the top of the crystal chamber and one on the bottom. But as it stands right now, I just used one on the bottom, and that's how I lit that up. All right, so you will definitely want that because, as you can see in the picture, there's quite a bit of size difference between the regular BTF single NeoPixels and those ones all right and that will come in very handy um, i did use a ccs v4 neopixel connector in here all right so that stays in there there is a custom neopixel holder that i designed to go inside the top of the crystal chamber we'll talk a little bit about the crystal chamber too um, and then the handle so to get to the chassis you want to take off the handle there's a few different ways that you can go about operating this handle We'll talk about that here in a second. All right, but for now, this is what the chassis looks like. So there is a removable battery. It's a static chassis, which is really nice. It's something that you couldn't do before and still have an 18650 with a 28 millimeter speaker. This is a Smuggles Outpost Elite speaker. Um, if you look in here, there is access to both your SD card and your micro USB. So you can get to everything without moving the board and not having to slide this out. So that's, that's how you do that. That's why I dropped that negative spring connector down so low so that we could have access to everything right here. All right. Um, if you look right here, it does say Jedi Killer V2. Uh, I didn't I didn't want to put V2. I wanted to put Gen 2, but I didn't quite have enough room. Uh, I went ahead and I put V2, so hopefully that's okay. All right. Uh, if you look on the very underside of this chassis, it says Phoenix Props, and then it also says Shadow Foil Props because Sam did a lot of work on this to make this Gen 2. All right, so I wanted to give him a shout out there. Uh, says Solo Sabers over here for me. There is a 20 pixel accent strip under this piece right here. And then when you flip this over, there's another 20 pixel accent strip right here. So a total of 40 accents inside of the chassis. You can run those as sub blades if you like and have up to 40 blades if you want. For now, I just I wired them together, but they're independent from everything else. So uh, you have three blade styles on the config that's on the SD card. Your first blade style is your blade. Your second blade style is your crystal chamber. Your third and final blade style is these two strips. All right. So like I said, you can break those down into sub blades if you like. 
and they can do different things. I just chose not to do that for this. All right, so that's what the chassis looks like. There's two different ways, or um, oh yeah, there are two different ways to lock this chassis down. There is a nice chassis retention screw that's located under the shroud. When you take the shroud off, and you'll have to do that to, to install it, you'll find a button head screw. I don't know what size it is, but it's specifically there for a chassis retention. Uh, so that was really cool. That is not how I went. Uh, uh, that's not how I went about it, though. One thing very interesting and very nice about this saber is that you can take this, uh, this crystal chamber out and you can do all of the install with the crystal chamber in the chassis. Like you don't need the main piece. You don't need all the shrouds. You can do all that together. And then when you're done, you simply just put it together. All right. And that's something that's very different from the Gen 1 is also. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll put a few pictures up right now to show you. Um, as you can see in these pictures, I did, you know, the chassis and I've got the crystal chamber wired up. I did use a two-part adhesive to adhese the chassis to the crystal chamber though. So be aware of that. You'll want to do that if you're going to go that route. It, I mean, but if you're not, then there is a very nice chassis retention screw, which is also something I use even though I didn't need it. All right, so that's what we've got there. Now on the handle, um, this handle comes apart in, in a few parts, but the main parts I'm going to talk about is this piece right here from here to here, and then this coupler right here, all right, because you can unscrew this coupler. Um, I chose, instead of making this coupler stay on the actual saber, uh, obviously, I chose to make it stay onto the handle. That way, you know, I could take the handle off at any time and I'd have board access. And then also for my battery. It took every bit of length to fit an 18650 and a 28 millimeter speaker in here. And uh, I still was short room. All right. So, what I ended up doing, if you can look at this handle right here, I put a 0.13 inch wide spacer right here because that was the amount of space I needed to back the back of this pommel off of the speaker so I didn't get sound distortion. So that's, it's basically this guy right here. I can zoom in on that. All right, so that, that was what I put right here. Um, I spent some time making sure I get the thickness right so that the claw right here still clocks correctly onto the saber. Um, so this is something that I will be doing if I do installs for anybody on this particular saber, somebody else might come up with a different idea and that's cool, right? This is just what I came up with. Um, like I was telling somebody else this morning, I tried to make it to where you would be hard pressed to even notice that if I didn't specifically point it out to you. All right. So it is right there when, right there where my pinky is at. All right. So that's what I did there. Um, something similar done to the gen one when we put an 18650 into, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's just something that I needed to do to get rid of the sound distortion. So we'll put a battery in. You'll notice uh, the negative side spring here is very low into the battery cradle. I dropped it very low so that I could get that board access. And then I cut it just a little bit. All right. So I cut some of the length off that spring. Um, you'll want to kind of make sure that you scoop that spring with the negative side, right? It's very easy to do. Just put the battery in and put it in. All right, but you will want to make sure it makes contact, obviously, with the negative side. And if you don't have contact, you'll notice that right away. So I got these LEDs doing a little something different when the saber is off. And then they do time out so they don't kill the battery. But when you turn the saber on, they go to a different scrolling effect. But it's red, red to match, you know, your crystal chamber. And then, obviously, your NeoPixel connector. But we're to turn this off. You'll see I got your crystal your crystals pulsing when the saber's off. So you have that animation here and then you have it up here as well. You got a little bit of shine through up here, which is nice. And here. All right. And then we got twist off. It's a pretty tight fit, but it does fit. If you choose to uh, install this saber yourself and, and you get my chassis, or, or like whatever chassis, really. You might find yourself doing just a little bit of sanding to the actual speaker. I mean, just the tiniest bit. Uh, not very much at all, but it de the, the speaker did need to be sanded a little bit so that it had clearance to get over this lip. All right. They just slide it on like that. 
and lock her down. And you got your claw over here just on the other side of this greebly right here. And we come over here and hit power. Saber sounds really good. And of course auxiliary is down here. And then twist off. All right, and we will need to use the, uh, the blade retention. Let me go get a Allen key real quick. So you have a blade retention screw. Um, if my camera wants to focus on it, you can kind of see it in that bottom slit right there. It's very well hidden, which, which is something I really like. All right, so go ahead and put your blade in here. Um, this is my test blade. This is a TriStar test blade from uh, my buddy Space Windu, but it is set up for a full length blade. I think I've got you currently at 138 neopixels, which is a pretty standard full length blade. All right. But we'll lock our saber down, takes a one inch, well, yeah, I said a one inch blade already. So you guys shine through here. So going forward, when I do the weathering, I'll probably go a little bit more aggressive on the weathering right here, since this is where, you know, there's cuts for the crystal chamber. I'll go a little bit more aggressive than I did right here, you know, since this is all kind of broken and blown out from the crystal chamber. There'll be a few differences. I won't go so aggressive, maybe, on some of these lines. So, auxiliary, very easy to press. Let's talk about these switches. These switches are way easier to use than the Gen 1s. Now, the Gen 1s weren't bad, but they were made out of like a rubber material, um, and it was sometimes difficult to get them to actuate. Uh, these ones are a very hard plastic. Um, they have a very pronounced plunger system on the underside of them and there are little springs on both of them. So they are very easy to come over here and press. Very nice. Play our soundtrack, which is a long press on the power. And another long press to turn that off. Now this just has my own sound font on it um, with a copy of the config file on the SD card. So you'll want to probably go in and do your own thing. If you had multiple fonts, of course, you just hit auxiliary to trade, right? <laughs> so, you know, apologize. Here's my font. Very solid saber when it's all put together. All right, and we'll go ahead and we will break it down. One thing about this build, guys, um, there was no place for a kill key. All right, so the kill key is you opening up the saber, taking the battery out. Uh, there, there was enough room for a static chassis, yes, uh, and a full-size battery and all that but there wasn't enough room for a kill key now there's a there are some things that you can do and we can talk about those and why i didn't do them but you just take the battery out from the positive side which is over here by your speaker if you want enough room for a kill key and you design your own chassis and you want enough room where you don't have to put the spacer in the handle like i did you can go with an 18350. Um, i didn't want to do an 18350 battery in here because i've got you know 40 accent strips over or 40 pixels over here i've got another pixel here so i'm lighting up 41 neopixel accents plus the blade plus the the uh the pcb right here uh you're looking at not very much battery life so i i chose to do obviously what i did right um, but there are some things that you could go about differently and then you could fit those components so for me it was most important to have a full length battery and that that's that all right so that is basically um, the Jedi Killer Gen 2 from Phoenix Props and Shadow Foil Props. Um, this is how I weathered it. The other one is weathered pretty much identical. This is the one that takes the, uh, uh, the red wire on the outside. I just haven't got around to installing it yet. So I didn't print a second chassis until I knew for a fact that the first one worked. So now that I've got this one 
all installed and it's working. The second one is actually over there printing in the background. All right, but um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to answer them and uh, may the force be with you.